Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today we have my week 8 college football predictions. So last week I had a record of 11-2, which brings my overall record on the season to 115-24. and So starting off this week, we have UT Martin visiting Tennessee. So Tennessee is coming off a huge win over Alabama, and UT Martin is an FCS opponent, but they're a pretty good uh, FCS opponent, actually ranked in the top 15, um, and they are 4-2. and But, I mean... Even though they're a good FCS team, Tennessee will still easily get the win here as Tennessee wins big 56-10. Up next, we have Ohio State hosting Iowa. So Iowa has a really good defense, and Ohio State is one of the nation's best offenses. But Iowa's offense is really bad. They have the fifth worst scoring offense in the country, averaging only 14.7 points per game. And I think this should be a dominant win for Ohio State, even though they're going against a really good Iowa defense. I still think Ohio State should be able to score 40-plus points, and I have Ohio State winning this one 45-3. Moving on, we have SMU hosting Cincinnati. So Cincinnati's been good after their Week 1 loss to Arkansas. They've won 5 straight. SMU has a good offense, but not a good defense. They have a great passing attack, but Cincinnati also has a pretty good secondary. Um, so it's an interesting matchup, but I'm going to take Cincinnati getting the win here at 37-26. Up next, we have Syracuse visiting Clemson. So both teams are undefeated. Syracuse has had a very easy pass to being undefeated, beating Louisville, UConn, Purdue, Virginia, Wagner, and NC State, but NC State was without their starting quarterback. Syracuse is a run-first team with a star running back Sean Tucker and a good dual-threat quarterback Eric Schrader. Um, but that plays right into the strength of the Clemson defense. They have the best run defense in the ACC and fourth-best run defense in the country. So it's definitely going to be a test for Syracuse because their passing game isn't that good. Um, but neither is the Clemson secondary. But I have Clemson getting the win here and extending their home winning streak to 38 games as Clemson will get the win here at 31-17. Up next, we have Boston College at Wake Forest. So Wake Forest has been pretty good with their only loss to Clemson. Boston College has been 2-4 and four and not good at all. They have one of the worst offenses in the country. Um, and Wake Forest has one of the most dangerous offenses in the country. So neither team is a very good defense, but on offense, they're polar opposites, as I just said. Um, I think Wake Forest will easily get the win here, as Boston College will not be able to keep up with them offensively. Wake Forest will win 42-10. Up next, we have LSU hosting Ole Miss. So Ole Miss has played a relatively easy schedule so far, um, but they are undefeated. They did play Kentucky. Um, now they face LSU, who hasn't been great. They have two losses and are 5-2 and two on the season. Lost to Tennessee and Florida State. Ole Miss has one of the best ground games in the country, averaging 271 yards per game on the ground. And LSU does not have the greatest run defense um, or have a great defense in general. And I think that will be the difference here as Ole Miss will get the win here at 34-21. Up next, we have Tulane hosting Memphis. So Tulane has been good this season, but now they face Memphis, who's... Great on offense, and a high-scoring offense, but their defense really isn't that good. Tulane does have a good defense, but I could definitely see Memphis with the upset win here. Um, just because Tulane doesn't have one of the greatest offenses to potentially keep up with Memphis, but they do have a good defense. I could see this game going either way, but I'm going to take Tulane, as they're going to get the win here, 31-28. Up next, we have Texas visiting Oklahoma State. So this is a big game for... For both teams, Oklahoma State starting quarterback Spencer Sanders is dealing with a shoulder injury and might not be 100% for this game. So that could definitely be a bad thing because uh, Oklahoma State can use all the help they can get on offense to try to keep up with an explosive Texas offense, which is really good, especially when Quinn Ewers is at quarterback. And the Oklahoma State defense hasn't been especially good this season. I could see this game going either way. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, but I'm going to take Texas on the road here, winning by a score of 37-31. Up next, we have Oregon hosting UCLA. So this is a big Pac-12 matchup. Both teams are undefeated in conference play, and UCLA is undefeated overall, as Oregon's loss was to Georgia in Week 1. Both teams want to run the ball, as they have the two best rushing offenses in the Pac-12, but both teams have great run defenses, the two best run defenses in the Pac-12. I could see this going either way. Oregon does have the edge here, because they are home, and UCLA hasn't won in Oregon since 2004. And Oregon has bounced back very nicely after their loss to Georgia. But now they face their best team since they played Georgia. I think this will be a high-scoring game. Both quarterbacks could run and make impacts with their legs. But I think Dorian Thompson-Robinson, the UCLA quarterback, is the more dynamic quarterback than Bo Nix. 
And he'll make one or two big plays, giving UCLA the win. But I could see this game going either way, but I'm going to take UCLA 35-31. Moving on, we have Mississippi State visiting Alabama. So both teams are coming off losses. Mississippi State lost to Kentucky, and Alabama lost to Tennessee. Mississippi State has an air raid offense led by quarterback Will Rogers, who is top five in the nation in passing yards. And Alabama was hurt by Tennessee through the air, but Mississippi State has a different type of passing offense. As they get the ball quickly, they've only thrown nine 30-plus yard passes all season. Um, so Alabama will bounce back from the loss against Tennessee, winning against Mississippi State by a score of 42-21. Up next, we have Penn State hosting Minnesota. So Minnesota is coming off a loss to Illinois, and quarterback Tanner Morgan uh, has a head injury and might not be able to play. Minnesota does have one of the nation's top running backs in Muhammad Ibrahim, but Penn State does have a great run defense, and it's going to be interesting to see how Penn State bounces back after they gave up they gave up over 400 yards on the ground last week to Michigan. So, are they going to get shredded on the ground again, or if they're or are they going to bounce back nicely? So that is definitely something to watch. I can see this game going either way. Um, it's a whiteout game for Penn State, and I'm going to take Penn State to get the win here, 24-16. And our final game, we have a pretty big Big 12 game, and that is Kansas State visiting TCU. So this is a huge Big 12 game. The last two undefeated teams in Big 12 play, TCU is undefeated overall. And TCU has had a stretch where they play four games that are pretty tough. They played rival SMU. They destroyed Oklahoma. They got past Kansas. And they beat Oklahoma State last week. Now they face another good team in Kansas State. So it feels like they have to lose one of these games. But... I like TCU's chances at home against Kansas, against Kansas State, so I'm going to take TCU to remain undefeated and beat Kansas State by a final score of 34-27. So those are my Week 8 college football predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Turn on notifications so don't miss any other upcoming videos. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my predictions, disagree, and why. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I do my best to post as often as possible, and I will see you in the next video.